And I thought, and, well, you know, that's so true. We don't really think of that, but that is really true. And it's the the life of of the bread is not just a uh, kind of side effect. It is in the process of making the bread. You're really using the yeast, and in the case of sourdoughs, even the the other um, microbes to create the lift, to create flavor. It really is an integral part of baking the bread, not just a kind of a convenient byproduct. And and really, um, bread is basically four ingredients, flour, water, salt, and yeast. But you talk about bread flour. Why is using bread flour so important? Oh, well, yeah, that came from sad experience. <laughs> like I said, as I was doing, making these, trying to bake all of these, loaves of bread trying to get it better and better and trying to figure out what on earth I was doing. I baked a lot of bricks. <laughs> and a lot of that was because the bread wouldn't rise right, and I looked at all kinds of reasons. Maybe I wasn't using enough yeast, was maybe because I wasn't using enough, you know, giving it long enough, or all kinds of things. Um, and there were a couple of things that finally, as I did a lot of reading and research in traditional bread-baking books, I realized what was going on, and the big one was there wasn't enough gluten being developed in the, the loaf of bread. Okay, well, what's causing that? Well, one of them is that the flour itself didn't have enough protein in it to turn into gluten. Well, that's why you have to use bread flour when making bread as opposed to all-purpose or other kinds of flours. Um you can use all-purpose flour, but you're going to need it a lot longer. It's never going to quite develop the gluten, and and the gluten's not going to trap the gas by the yeast, and so it's just not going to rise as well. And then you do also address the question of the different types of yeast that are available. Is there any one that, that you prefer more so over the others? Oh, I don't know if there's any particular brand. Um I don't really worry about whether it's rapid rise or instant rise or any of those kinds of things. There's a lot of kind of esoteric kinds of yeasts that um, that uh, you know, like cake yeasts and cream yeasts and all those kinds of things that you can buy that are more designed for a lot of high quantity uses. So it's usually more like bake shops that do those. Um, you know, you just get the little jar or the little packets. I usually get um, kind of an air-compressed brick at the supermarket, cause, and then I store it in my freezer because it lasts a long time. And, and um, Really my favorite, though, when I have the time to really do some some slow, nice preparation, is to catch my own wild sourdough and let it season up over the course of about a week. And and that and that gives you that gives you a great tasting bread because uh, because you have taken the time to uh, to to let it germinate. I guess would that be the right word? Yeah, I guess you could use that word, or, <laughs> or just ripen if you'll. Or ripen, right? Uh, you yeah. al- you also talk in the book about um, uh, you know knowing when your dough is is. Uh, Needed well enough to put into the pan, and um, that's called the window pane test. Can you explain that? Oh yeah, that was actually a major breakthrough for me, um, because you know I I see these recipes and they say need for so many minutes, and um, and so I'd need for that many minutes, and then I, again I'd have this brick, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, and my, my mom, who's a great bread maker, said, well, maybe you're not kneading it enough. And I said, well, I'm doing it, you know, it says knead for five minutes, and I need it for five minutes. What's the problem here? And then I realized that all of these other factors were playing in, like the moisture content in the flour and the absorption of the flour and the, how old the flour is and whether or not it's bread flour or regular flour and all kinds of things like that. And so what I, when I finally heard about this and started doing it regularly, then suddenly I started baking really good loaves of bread. The idea is that you're kneading along, and I usually knead by hand, but you can still do this trick if you're doing a machine. Um, stop, cut off a little chunk, roll it up in a little ball, and then hold it up and start 
kind of pulling it and stretching it almost as if you're making a little tiny pizza. And if you can stretch it to the point where you can see light through it, like it becomes translucent, like a little window pane, hence the name, without tearing, then you know you need it enough. If it tears before it gets to a real translucent state, then you slap it back in and need it some more. And, and by using that window pane test, then your bread usually uh, comes out just the way you like it, right? Yeah, because no longer am I going by the clock, I'm going by the actual readiness of the dough. And sometimes if I'm using older flour, I may end up kneading for 15 or 20 minutes to get to that window pane. Other times when I'm using nice, fresh bread flour, I may get there in five or six minutes. Well, as I said, your book has lots of great um, how-tos and lots of great information for the steps for bread baking and especially bread baking in the the Dutch oven. Um, you also have a lot of um, ethnic bread recipes, pizza recipes, uh, um, cinnamon dessert kind of recipes, lots of lots of recipes there. Um, and you have tested out all of those recipes, I'm sure, right? Yeah, actually, those mostly came from the pages of my blog. Um, and uh, and so what I, went, what I did is I went back to all of those and, and edited them and, and, you know, updated them all to my... Because I started out doing those back when I didn't really know what I was doing and <laughs> gradually learned, right? That's, that's what blogging is all about. That's <laughs> right. And so um, if you would give us your, your uh, blog address in, in case any of our listeners want to uh, check out more. I know you have lots of recipes on there as well. And just get a little bit more information. How can they uh, co- contact you or reach you? Sure. It's marksblackpot.com. And it's really got recipes more than just bread, all kinds of... It's all about cooking outdoors in a Dutch oven. Um, so there's, you know, roasts and and seafood and soups and stews and all kinds of stuff. And before I let you go, we talked mostly about the bread as opposed to the, uh, the Dutch oven cooking. But in case somebody would um, um, want to cook bread in their Dutch oven, what would be maybe just one or two tips that you would say uh, that, that they need to know to, in order to do that successfully? Great. There's a, well, obviously making sure that you, you know, mix the, the dough and knead it correctly and let it rise correctly. All of that stuff is vital to making good bread in a regular oven and in the Dutch oven. Once you get out into the outdoors in the Dutch oven, there's so many other variables that you can't control quite as well, you know, like the outdoor temperature, the wind. All of those things can affect the amount of heat. So you want to make sure that you're being very careful in the coals that you're using on top and on the bottom of your Dutch oven. And also, in order to determine when it's done, I stick a little tiny meat thermometer in it, in the dough ball, and I bake it to about 200 degrees internal temperature. That tells me when it's done so much better than looking at how brown the outside is or trying to lift it out to thump the bottom. Um, It's really the only way I've found to make a really good, consistent um, loaf of bread. Well, for anybody who uh, has made bread in the past and wants to uh, try something a little bit more challenging, I suggest you try uh, pick up a copy of Dutch Oven Breads. We've been talking with Mark Hansen, or check out his uh, blog page, MarksBlackPot.com. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with us today. Well, thanks so much for having me. All right. Again, it's uh, Dutch Oven Breads. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back after this.